and welcome back my friends to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today we want to talk about how we can deploy our first Dart web server to Heroku, a platform that allows us to put a lot of server stuff inside so that we can reach our services from there. It is beginners friendly because it's completely for free and it's very fast. So stay with me till the end to see how you can deploy your own server to Heroku. All right, in the first part of the series, we were talking about how we create our own Dart backend server, but it was only possible to use it locally on our own computer, which is not usually the thing that we want because it doesn't help us a lot. But today we want to deploy it. That means we want to provide that piece of software so that everyone in the world can access it. That means the website that we created the last time is now available in the internet so your friends, families and also your customers can access it. Why do we use Heroku? I mentioned it already in the intro. It's completely for free to use as long as you don't get to a, a certain amount and also that you don't want a full availability. The good thing about Heroku also besides that it is completely for free is is that you can scale up very quickly. It is for free if you want to have a production server that is available to the internet. But if you want to scale up more customers, more internet bandwidth and things like that, more requests, for example, then you will probably have to scale up and pay for that service. Heroku is a Salesforce company, uh, but yeah, that's pretty usual. All right, but now before I talk too much, you know the drill, we will jump right into code. To get started with Heroku, you will need an Heroku account. Down in the video description, you will find the link to Heroku itself. From there, you will probably, if you have logged in, find something like this. You can see already I have created several apps already, but you can create a new one via this one, or you can follow me along with the CLI that we will install. For that, we will need the Heroku CLI. This is the Heroku CLI, also the link down in the video description, that we will install. As you can see, there is a Mac OS installer and a Windows installer or an Ubuntu installer. Just follow them as you need them. So for me, I am on Mac, so let's open up a terminal and Brew is installed. If you have never installed something with Brew, I will also link down a video description, uh, a link in the video description. Great, now that Heroku is installed, we can confirm that by just entering Heroku into the terminal. And if everything works well, we can see that all the commands are showing up. If this is not the case, try to restart your terminal to make uh, the environment variables running correctly. Great stuff. But now we need a project. Hopefully you remember the Dart server that we created in the last episode. Up here you will find now the link to the video if you haven't followed it yet. But what we were able to do so far is we could create a server which open it up and if we start that one a small web page goes up where it said my name is Max. Great. But now we want to make it possible that this one is not only accessible via localhost, which we are ourselves, so this is our computer, but by an actual internet address. In order to do that, we have to deploy it. So as we remember, deployment means to deliver the software to everyone who wants to use it. Great. All right, back into our project. I increased a little bit the font size so that you can read easier. And what you can see here, if we enter now Heroku, we can log in. With that, usually there should be opening up a browser if you press any key. So that happens. For me, it's opening up. Great stuff. And I can log in. So I will do that now quickly. All right, in order to um, create a new application, we can now enter Heroku create and now the name of the application. For example, fe dart server and I add a 01 because I already created once. So if I do that, it takes a second and it's done. And now two very interesting links shown up. The first one is directly the link to the Heroku welcome page. So this is deployed on your local instance of Heroku. What does that mean? Heroku creates us a VM part of his server that allows us to access it via the internet. And on the other side, we got a Git link. And this is a real Git application, like we know it from GitHub or GitLab. And this one needs now to be added into our project that we have here locally. Okay. If you have already an initialized Git project, like I have here with the Dart server, then if you enter Git remote, 
you will get automatically Heroku because it's now added into your remotes list. If you have not have a project already in Git, you need to make Git in it first. And after that saying um, Git add Heroku um, and adding the URL that you had before like so. And with that, you will add the new Heroku instance to your part. Now it's a little bit important how Heroku works actually. It creates a Git service in a server instance just for you, where you push now to the main branch. And if you push something there on the main branch, it executes a build and this build will be then deployed to that website that we saw beforehand, where you can access it later. Now this creates a so-called Dino, which is a Unix instance that runs your code at the end. And yeah, now we need to build that things. And the problem with Dart is that it's not generally supported by Heroku and we need to take a user created package for that. All right, as a build pack, we will use the Heroku build pack Dart that is created by Igrigorki. And we will use that to install um, Heroku. But what we also need is a Dart SDK URL for Linux. And we will take that as a second part. For that, we head over to dart.dev, get Dart archive. And here we will find these stable channels. And I use the version now 2.16.2 and choose Linux. And then we take the architecture for x64 right click and say copy link address and with that we have now everything to set up our heroku correctly how how do we do that we go back to our project and here inside we clear that quickly and we enter um, heroku config set dart underscore sdk underscore url equals to that one that we copied right now enter and with that, you can see it's setting the URL on your server and it's also setting a versioning for that. Great stuff. So this is now a system variable on your Heroku instance. Another part that we have to do is we have to set the build pack. And I've prepared that, of course, so we can enter that. It's Heroku config add build pack URL and the URL. And the same thing happens here. We set the whole thing and a new version has been created. Great stuff. Now. It is time to push all the source code into Heroku's instance for that git add dot. With that, we add everything that is in our instance right now, if you haven't yet. So you can see we didn't edit anything, but now we have to git push and set the upstream. So set upstream and say Heroku main. With that, we push now to the new remote that Heroku created on their main branch in the repository. And if we do that, it will take a second and we get now way more information than usual. You can now see, we see everything from the remote, like compressing the build sources. You can see that Dart VM getting downloaded and all these kind of information, like environment variables that are set and all these things. And if we are running through, we download all everything from pub.dev and more and download and building. It doesn't find a web folder, so it will not provide you with a web page right now, but it can find a proc file. And we didn't talk about proc files, but if we check the project, we can see there is a proc file. Important, there is no extension to it. And if we check that, we can see we have here web column, and then we have the path to the Dart um, executable on Heroku and afterwards the thing that we want to execute. In our case, it is bin dart server dart. So if we go back here to our uh, Git integration in the terminal, we can see now all these kind of things downloaded, the files not found. And if we see now we have released version six with the direct release to with the URL. And if we access the URL, we can see that naming is gone. But now that is only if everything for, per, works perfect. But there are two things that you have to keep in mind that are very important. If we check our project once more in our server, you should make sure that localhost is the right host because sometimes you have to change that to 0000, 000 as an IP, which talks to itself. And 8080 is actually not the correct port to use because Heroku will always restart its servers whenever it's needed. So for that, we need to get the system environment variables for the port from Heroku. So let's do that next. In order to get this server, um, uh, that port, I have prepared a small script. So we will first execute the 
var platform environment. With that, we get from the OS system the var environment variables. And now we want to read them. And what we can do here is just doing a quick filter on the entries of this environment variable and take the port out of it. And if we don't get the port, you can see we have an or else, we set the map entry to 8080. And this is if we are working locally. And now the only thing we have to do is replacing this 8080 with the port. Uh, yeah, because we get here back a um, string, we have to parse it. So we make int parse and parse the port dot value. This change has now to be committed and pushed to the Heroku server. So I will do that quickly and then it should work always properly. Okay, maybe one more addition. Now that your web server is running, let's have a look into Heroku's website, what actually happens behind the scene. So you could see whenever we pushed something to the main branch of the server, it directly started a build and succeeded on the one hand. And with that, the light is gone. Okay. <laughs> All right, now you have successfully deployed your first server. Great stuff with Dart. But now let's have a look behind the scenes what the website provides to us. So you can see I'm now in this uh, app on Heroku's side and we can see the overview. On the left side, you can see yourself, your email, and you have your um, process that have been executed. This is exactly what you can see in the proc file, if you remember. And on the right side, you can see what happened. So initial release, enable the log plaques. We set up the Dart SDK URL, if you remember, the build pack URL. And with that, the build succeeded. Then we set the path variable um, and deployed the whole thing. And if we press here on more, we can also view the logs. And that's pretty interesting because here you can see all the logs that happens against your Heroku server. So if I, for example, come now with my phone and just reload, quickly the app, you can see, aha, uh -huh, there was a 200 and we delivered the website. Great. But also there we can see what we have deployed, all the metrics, activities, access, and all these kind of things. And as I said, Heroku is pretty much scalable. So you are able to change there a lot of things, enter security parts, move it to a different location, things like that. Cool, that was not too hard, right? We have deployed our server and I just wanted to double check. You can see on my phone, we have now the website directly accessible. Great stuff. So if you are interested, you can join that website and enter your name and um, get something back from it. That's the first step to deploy something. Now you have all tools in your hand to create a fantastic server, to push everything up, to create really a full stack application like a quiz or a survey or whatever you like to do. This is the whole magic to create your own server. And the best thing that you can do and what we will do also in the next couple of uh, videos probably is to connect now this backend server with our Flutter apps. Great stuff. And now we have Dart in our hand. We have the might that we know already and we can create server instances. Great stuff. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Give me a like if you liked that episode and check out down in the video description all the links. You will also find a link to my website where I created a blog article for it. Thanks for watching and see you the next time. Bye.